So if I'm a resident of a state, I'm a contributor to the state, I'm acting as a shareholder to that state within the whole of America. And you can't take the town, you can't take the county, and you can't take the city out of the state, and you can't take the state out of America. So if I am uh, complying or agreeing to the terms that are safe uh, within my state of residents that, you know, daily life and habits can live by and prosper and be healthy, I can go anywhere in America and do that same thing without fear of jurisdiction of another state line coming down on me. And in that case, it's the responsibility of the state and the people of that state to say, hey, don't, don't mess with our people because you're messing with America. And... You know, as far as that's concerned, you know, every American is equal to me. If you're an American, a citizen is not equal to me, okay? Uh, I can be a citizen at certain times for administrative purposes, but I'm an American. So technically, you can't take America and, and part it up. You can't take the American out of America just because you're in somebody else's uh, assumed vicinity. Now, if you're in their house, it's different, but public services and stuff, they don't have a right to do that, and that's the really the way it should work. So, like, let's say if I'm doing something like partaking in and and not or not partaking in a hypocrisy, and I go to a state like Massachusetts and I get CBD and THC to smoke, then you know that's the same thing as you know an alcohol or cigarettes or pills because you know it's it's or coffee so therefore one state can't say okay we have cigarettes pills and alcohol but you can't have this and if you're in our state and you know you're gonna get screwed that's not the way it works so all that has been wrong all this time and nobody's contesting it and that's why it's like that and I will say this anybody from my state of North Carolina shouldn't have problems in any other state either, you know, uh, and I would put this out there, uh, my email is F-R-E-E-H-A-N-D-A-N with the number one at yahoo.com, so technically, and if, if American had a problem, uh, not being a lawyer or an attorney that's stigmatized with bar member bias, you know, I would say, I, I would give you advice if you wanted to, based on my personal experience on how to write your own paperwork and address these situations, and my perspective and point of view, and I suggest that, like, you know, uh, bar members and judges and, and state attorneys should respect this and they should work with people like me to make this America better instead of being a domestic terrorist and, you know, prosecuting families from state to state. You know, if somebody from there wants to visit their family that in a, it's another state line, that shouldn't take away their rights and that shouldn't subject them to the tyranny and communism and, and basically the threat of life harm, you know, and death because, you know, an officer in one state is used to conducting his business that way because the world is too big now, it's too much time, so you can't do that anymore. So the new America, we are unified, and if you are a civil or a public servant, you're unified with each other, but you are there to protect our freedoms, and it has to go this way. So I don't have to have a formal education to have common sense, and somebody that has a formal education doesn't necessarily have common sense when they're only looking at, you know, uh, administrative uh, content, uh, which is a facet to protect us that's been used against us via the, the breach of contract and the double standard and the unfair contract and the threat and bias. So um, let's make this America even greater by doing something like this. So um, there's my email. Um, I get filed around just because, and I, I've been traveling. And last night, uh, I've had cops on my on my ass, dude. I'm, and you know what? I called nine one. I called the police station today in another county and state, and says, "Okay, I'm traveling through, and you know, I'm nonviolent. This is a circumstance. If you stop, if if a cop decides that I'm going to be stopped because I'm unfamiliar or they fabricate a profile in their mind, you know, uh, even if I was walking around with my guitar, you know." and playing my guitar, you know, you can't say I'm a bum and come into my life, that happened yesterday, so, you know, basically I give notice, so I notified the police station who put me to dispatch, so it's on record uh, that, 
you know, I'm insured, I'm responsible, I'm a non-violent, and I'm traveling through your state and county, and you're not going to waste my time. So if, if I'm being sniffed out, and I'm and I'm gonna get pulled. If I was to, you know, if some if somebody was attempting to pull me over because they felt they had jurisdiction, then uh, I'm I'm gonna call nine one one. And that's what I had told them. I says that's the way it's gonna go for now because I shouldn't have to pull over just to explain myself to some person who's probably younger than me uh, in most cases, and they're in in a costume, you know, with a shiny badge and a gun. And thinking that, you know, oh, uh, I'm the Duke, you know, or I'm a, you know, I'm Mr. You know, Cowgirl Jane, you know, out there. It's not happening. So, go away. So, unless there's a victim involved, an actual victim with explicit proof of factual evidence and witness that exists, that's been properly filed, uh, like a complaint or whatever, and, and, and the due process has been taken to affirm that, stay out of my life. Stay out of my other Americans' life, too, because you know what? We're, we have unity now together, and I had a really good conversation with a sergeant yesterday, and and uh, also some clerks in this other police station, the, the ordeals I had in, the, in this other county. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm um, getting the body cam footage from that. I'm getting the report from that. I'm um, finding out information on the people that called the cops on me, you know, that addressed me illy. And then when I responded illy, it was only looked at that I responded Ill illy. And it said that the cop cleaned themselves as, as a victim and said that uh, I caused two problems. Which isn't the case. And I didn't want to call 911 and say, okay, this drunk guy almost hit me going to the liquor store while I was walking through the parking lot with my guitar. And, you know, and now the DMV lady is yelling at me because she has no signs and it looks like construction more than a driver's course in a closed bank parking lot. Do they have permission to be there? I don't know. It's, it's negligence. I didn't call the cops then on them because I didn't want to waste the officer's time. But if you're going to waste the officer's time and jeopardize their safety and the integrity of their police department by being fearful and and living in fear and paranoid and, and being biased, prejudiced, racist, discriminatory like a lot of older white people can be, uh, women mostly, you're going to get the hammer drop down on you in a sense of administrative force. And I can kick it and I'm not going away. And now I have like a tally, dude. I have like literally probably like 20 different cases ranging from New York to Florida, okay, uh, different states, including those two states, with all these kind of, uh, like, technically charges, and, and, you know, Mr. Ron DeSantis, you need to get in touch with me.